Hi everyone, Miss Debbie here. Can you believe that we are meeting for the 10th time online? That's amazing to me, but I have enjoyed talking with you this way and I hope that you're enjoying it as well. Please remember that the Mountain Mover Leaders, um, we miss you, we love you, we continue to think of you regularly and we pray for you often and we are looking forward to seeing you in the weeks ahead. Now today I'm going to start out with a question. How are you doing at listening to your head coach? Well, maybe you might reply to me, well, Miss Debbie, we aren't listening to any head coaches right now. None of our spring or summer sports are taking place. They've all been canceled. And I tell you, I really feel for you with that because my family really enjoyed sports and we went to a lot of sporting events when they were growing up. And that's bummer news to hear that you won't be able to play some of your sports. But I want to encourage you, you have good news because you're getting to play in the spiritual game a lot during this time. And there is great value in practicing and playing in the spiritual game. And let me tell you a little bit about that from the scripture today. A man named Paul that we've talked about many times is writing a letter to a man named Timothy. And he's telling Timothy the value of training. And this is in the book of Timothy. Let me read it to you. Paul says to Timothy, training the body has some value, but spiritual training has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life that is to come. So don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. Also set an example in how you love and in what you believe. So Paul is telling us physical training in sports is of some value, but spiritual training is has value in everything. It's more valuable. So spiritual training is learning to listen to your head coach. So who is your head coach? Well, let me explain. A few weeks ago, I had encouraged you to follow and obey your parents. And actually, they are your assistant coaches. They challenge you and encourage you. They want you to know and listen and obey your head coach, who is Jesus Christ. So your head coach is Jesus Christ. Now you spend a lot of time with your assistant coaches, which are your parents, and they are teaching you a lot. But the head coach, if you have said yes to Jesus as the forgiver and leader of your life, lives within you. He is with you every moment. And it's important that you know the voice of your head coach. So I ask you that question again. How are you doing with hearing your head coach. Now, let's say you were able to play in your softball team or your baseball team this summer. Would you listen to them as your coach if they gave you tips on how to bat better or how to catch better? Are you all listening to your parents right now when they give you things to say? I hope so. I would hope you would listen to both of those people when they encourage you. So that's even more valuable that we learn how to listen to our spiritual head coach which is Jesus Christ. And the reason why that's valuable is because you won't always be with your parents. As you get older, you may go off to college. Maybe some of you will get jobs. You might buy a house and you'll even get married, some of you, and you won't be living with your parents, your assistant coaches anymore. And it will be all about hearing that head coach, that spiritual coach, Jesus Christ in your life. So I really encourage you, use all this time that you have to be practicing listening to the voice of Jesus and then obeying it. And let me give you a quick example from my own life before we go. Um, all four of our kids really liked basketball. And we would play and practice actually with them a lot. My husband was a coach. He had played in high school. He was really good at teaching them how to shoot, to know the game of basketball. Um, I didn't really know, but I encouraged them and could toss some passes and help them and spend time with them, rebound for their shots. But one thing we always said to our children after we do those things with them is remember, you have to take your own shots. So no matter how much their dad or I encouraged them, they had to play the game. We could not play the game for them. 
And as we watched our kids play sports over the years and other athletes, we found that the athletes that did the very best were the ones who really knew the game inside and out. And they were great obedient players to the plan of their head coach and what their head coach was wanting them to do. And so as we talk about head coaches, if it's that valuable to listen to a head coach in sports, how much more valuable is it to listen to your head coach spiritually in Jesus Christ? So again, as you have this extra time this spring and this summer, make sure you're practicing listening and obeying your head coach. All right, let's go ahead and go to prayer. And today we're going to pray for our three-year-olds. So let's go to the Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for a great day. Thank you that you are a wonderful spiritual head coach. We want to know your voice. We want to hear your voice and we want to obey you because we know that has great value in the life that we're living now and the life that is to come. So we pray for all the mountain movers today and their families, but especially by name, we pray for Samuel, Jameson, Brooklyn, Raymond, Memphis, Hannah, Luke, Leah, Brandon, Nova, Graham, Jeremiah, Adley, Andrew, and another Adley. So thank you, Father, for these wonderful children and their families. And thank you for the assistant coaches as our parents. And again, as Jesus is our spiritual head coach, we want to listen to him in your name. Amen. See you boys and girls next week.